Thank you for the prelude music. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jim Brunn, and it's just a delight to be with you today and pray that God's Holy Spirit will touch all of us and empower us in our faith walk. Welcome and blessings to you. It is a joy to see those who gather here this morning and a special greeting to those joining us on Zoom this morning. We hope that you find this time together uplifting, that you experience God's love and the warmth of God's saving grace. We begin with our call to worship, acknowledging our brokenness and frailty and our reliance on the Almighty. As we gather as a community of faith, let us praise God for God's continued love and grace. God has gathered us together as Christ the King Lutheran Church. God has fed us with the word. God has nourished us with the sacraments. God sends us out to be God's witnesses in the world. Praise God for the blessings of new life every single day. Gracious and loving and merciful God, we thank you for your faithfulness to our congregation. May we as Christ the King Lutheran Church continue to live out your gospel by your good grace. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for the peace throughout the world and for unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead. We may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The psalm today is Psalm 90. Please read with me responsibly. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O oh Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning, so shall we rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you afflicted us and as many years as we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our hand. The reading today is from Hebrews chapter 4. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from morrow, it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today is from Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. The man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing, go sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive hundredfold now in this age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and fields with persecution, persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. Many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Almighty Lord, we pray that you would help us to know how blessed we are in the person of Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead and who walks with us every day. Strengthen us in our faith walk and help us to know of your love for each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. At my house, every year especially, this time of year, my wife is into fall decor. And uh, one of the things that she wants us to put up is uh, this outside. It says, thankful and blessed. It's a sign. And uh, we've had this sign for I don't know how many years. I think it was like 10. And so I got it out of the box about two weeks ago, and I looked at it, and it was all faded. I could barely read what it said. And so I decided, well, I'll take some paint, and I'll repaint it, and here it is. And then I was thinking about today's sermon and about how sometimes I, too, need to be repainted in the sense that I need to have my faith renewed on a daily basis because I don't know how many of you watch the nightly news <laughs> and uh, or the news in the morning or wherever and and there's all kinds of things that we see in the news right and many of them are troubling things and so every day I'm going to put this up over here so Every, every night before I go to bed, I have a prayer journal, and I write some things first in the prayer journal that are positive. So let me share that with you. I 
say in my prayer journal, thank you for Easter and new life in Christ. Thank you for your promise to walk with us and keep our faith alive. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Give us faith and trust in grace and love. Thank you for the victory over death and all who are in heaven with you. Blessed be our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how it is for all of you to get a little older, but uh, when I think about getting older, things can happen that make me want to be repainted like that sign. I uh, remember giving a children's sermon about probably been 12 years ago, uh, and I asked the kids who came up for the children's sermon, how old do you have to be old? And the highest number that any of those kids could come up with is 25. And I said, oh, that makes me as old as dirt. That's what I said. When I started out being a pastor at the age of 26, I was a rookie pastor. And it was like, I guess, for some in the congregation that I served in Iowa, I looked like I was in junior high or something. I had uh, one lady in that congregation said, you know, you're just like the doctor that I go to because my doctor retired and now I have a junior high person to be my physician. And that was 47 years ago for me. Things happen like two hurricanes that took place in our country in the southeastern part and in Florida with the loss of life, home, water, power, and a great tragedy. And as we grow older, some of us face many health problems. Some of us have disagreements with family members. Some of us have hurt relationships. And we are aware that none of us are perfect. When I was a kid, I remember my parents left my brother and I at home over a weekend, and uh, my brother was a pretty big, strong, strong athlete. He was four and a half years older than me. We had a disagreement. I picked up the biggest thing I could find in the house, which was a suitcase, and he ran into our bedroom and closed the door, and I put the suitcase, and a big hole happened on that door. And in order to cover up my bad behavior, I went to the kitchen, took down the kitchen calendar and put it over the hole and the door. And then when mom and dad came back, the first thing mom said was, what happened to my calendar? So, you know, I was stuck. I was revealed. A person who has some problems and who also is sinful. And so I need to be repainted every once in a while, like that sign. And a reminder that the risen Jesus is with us to lift us up. So we say today, as we are thankful, thank you for Easter and new life in Christ. Let us be thankful and blessed. And now to the story of our gospel reading, the story of a rich man who came to Jesus and said this to him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Have you ever asked that question? What does it mean to be rich? He's a rich man. Does it mean that we have food, a roof over our heads, a home? Does it mean to have good health, friends, a television set? A cell phone, a computer, how about a car? Could we do without that? I'm aware that Fremont area and the Bay Area is a pretty high cost of homes. In fact, I would imagine that many of our homes are worth a million dollars if you were to put them on the market. Pat, you'd probably tell us more about that. And uh, I also did a little research about wealth. Here in Fremont, I looked at how many businesses store people's stuff. 
And I found out that in Fremont alone, there are 23 of those storage places. And I think about all of the things that I have purchased. And I think at the time that I purchased them, I thought, man, this is really gonna make me happy. And how many times have you purchased something like I have and found out it really wasn't such a great thing? So we put it off to the side and it goes in a box and we have more and more stuff to store. And so material wealth in Fremont seems to be a pretty big thing. We are rich by worldly standards. I did some uh, looking at, we have approximately 8 billion people who live on the planet Earth. And 805 million people go undernourished every single day. That's over 12% almost of the entire population in our world that need food on a daily basis and don't have enough. So I guess when I look at myself, we may be middle-class people, but I look at myself and maybe all of us together, we are rich and blessed and thankful. I've never missed one day in my whole life, all 73 years of it, I've never missed one day without having food to eat or shelter. So the question that the rich man asked of Jesus was this, so what must I or we must, what must we do to inherit eternal life? You know the commandments, Jesus said, no murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lying, no defrauding, and honor your parents. And be perfect without sin if you want to have eternal life. Well, beginning of today's worship service, we all confess that we were sinful and we need God's forgiveness. So it's not possible for us based upon us being perfect, even though this rich man said, you know, I've kept all those things, Jesus, for as far as I can remember. That's not the place where we can say, hey, I've been good enough. Now give me eternal life. I can remember my youth and even in my old age getting into trouble, needing correction and forgiveness. Even how I use my blessings the way God would want or not want. And so what about you? Where is it with you? When Jesus told the rich guy, go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me. His reaction, according to the reading of the gospel, was that he was shocked and he was filled with grief. So what are we to do with all of our blessings? There is a hymn in our hymnal. It's hymn number 686. And the words of that hymn are these. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be, all that I have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. So when I hear those words, it tells me that I don't own anything. And if we could possibly believe it, none of us own anything. God owns everything, and we are gifted and blessed and trusted with all that God gives us because it comes from the Lord. I would imagine that if we had that conversation with most people who live in our neighborhood, they'd probably say, what do you mean we don't own anything? Don't you know how hard I work for it? Don't you know that this is my home? my car, my life. It's difficult to hear and believe that we own nothing and God owns everything, 100% of everything. For many, it seems impossible to believe that God own, owns everything and that we own nothing. In fact, it's 
kind of boggles your mind. Does mine. And so even eternal life is a gift. On our own, it's impossible for mortals to earn it or be, be, be blessed by how good we have been. For mortals, this is impossible, but not for God. He says, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. I've never uh, had a camel, but I sense that they're pretty big. And I have looked at an eye of a needle, and I don't know how that's even possible. But with God, all things are possible. God has the power to forgive, to make us thankful, and to see how we have been blessed with what God has given to us. We are gifted and blessed, and when we come to realize it, we don't own it, and we can ask the Lord, how does the Lord want us to use our blessings? How can we be good caretakers, stewards of all our blessings? How can we use 100% of our gifts, our money, or actually God's money, the time we have, the mental thinking that we have, to serve Jesus Christ, to be thankful and joyful and really blessed. So back to this sign over here. I needed to repaint it. I needed to say to myself, am I thankful? Can God renew our thankfulness with the blessings that we have and know that God in Christ Jesus has richly blessed us and done the impossible? He loves us, stands with us, is the risen one who gives us life today and through eternity. Amen. We will say the Apostles' Creed together. 
I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I believe, believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ, God, God's only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole of creation. As we receive the abundance of God's blessings, fill us with thankfulness. Thank you for Easter and new life in Christ. Thank you for your promise to walk with us, keep our faith alive. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Give us faith and trust in grace and love. Thank you for victory over death. All who are in heaven with you, God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. We lift up to you, Lord, all you have suffered injuries, loss of property, and loss of life because of Hurricane Helene and Milton. May they receive your care and lift them up with this time of great loss. God of grace, hear our prayer. May you continue to guide all of us here at Christ the King Lutheran Church as we look to the future. Be with all who lead us, Pastor Ray Waspy, music director Marietta Davel and our choir, and our church council. Open our lives to be your servants and help us share the love of Christ with others. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. Steadfast God, as we are in the last weeks leading up to election day, guide all who vote to seek your wisdom. Guide our nation. Help our elected leaders work for good of all people. And divisiveness, God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are afflicted, tormented, grieving, oppressed, and lonely. Deliver the strength of your love and compassion to all who need it today. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal our broken world. Stop gun violence. End the warring madness between Russia and Ukraine. Israel and Hamas and Iran. May our United States work to accomplish a ceasefire and peace. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Ever living God, we rejoice to be heirs of the eternal life made real in Jesus' death and resurrection. We give thanks for all saints of all times and places, first and last, who still inspire us to faithful living. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For whom else and what else do we pray? Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share Christ's peace with your neighbor. Uh, good morning, everybody. Before we start with the offerings and the anthem, um, today um, I would thank my choir and those who are here today and those not able to make it. Thank you for sharing your voices. And just in case the congregation, it's such a beautiful um, anthem. If you would like to join in the chorus, you can find it on page 821, if you know the song and would like to join in the chorus. God, provider of all we need, provide us an opportunity to share with one another what God has blessed us with. In being good stewards, we are called to give as God has given to us.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. All are welcome without exception. Please come. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ and the Spirit, whom you poured out upon the church and your people. And so with the church on earth and all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, <clears throat> broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. The risen Christ is in our midst, so with Christ we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be done, done on earth as and in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today, today our daily, daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and, and deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Christ invites you to partake of Holy Communion, and as part of the one body of Christ, we welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. All are welcome to come forward to receive the bread and the wine or a blessing. We break and share the bread, and if you would like gluten-free wafers, ask the server, and it will be provided. We have wine and grape juice. The wine is the darker colored liquid, and the grape juice is the lighter. Come 
delight in God's goodness and mercy. May the loving and compassionate God continue to bless you now and all your days to come. Amen. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Um, you know, making your way in the world today takes about everything you've got, but taking a break from all your worries, that sure would help a lot. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name and that they're always glad you came. You want to go where people can see that our troubles, they're all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. So full disclosure, I actually didn't write all that myself. Anybody want to volunteer where that's from? <laughs> um, I thought about the cheer song this summer, uh, working on, on Safe Pro Park. Um, sometimes I've, I've kind of gotten frustrated by the limitations on what we can do for the participants in the program. Um, you know, technically, if, uh, if we want to give out food, it should be individually wrapped. And if we want to do something for one person, we got to do it for everybody. And so, um, uh, you know, just the, just the restrictions uh, are kind of unfortunate sometimes. You know, we do give out the gift cards for groceries and for uh, a restaurant and for gas cards. Um, so that's kind of good. 
Um, but if, if after a couple of years in the program now, after working with the participants in years, I think that one of the, the, the best things we can do for them is to provide a home where everybody knows your name. And we're always glad that you came. Um, so over at CTK, you know, over the years, we've been pretty generous with our, our facilities, with, you know, sharing our facilities with the scouts and with the, um, uh, the AA and the seniors and the um, yoga and that kind of stuff. And those are all great programs, but they really don't have the deep impact that the safe parking does. So I, I know that we kind of um, get frustrated and depressed by um, our dwindling numbers here and our graying and that kind of stuff. But in terms of the things that matter the most, um, things have never been better. Um, and we should feel good about that. So uh, yeah, it make, kind of makes for an inter interesting dynamic uh, uh, with the participants. You know, I usually start my shift way. I uh, kind of go around, greet everybody. You know, I, I look at the cars and say, hey, Mike, how you doing? Can I get you a, a bottle of water? And uh, it creates kind of an awkward situation because I'm just one of the many volunteers and they're, they're one of the participants and they probably don't know my name, even though I introduce myself always to the new people. Um, but uh, I know their names and um, it's, it's kind of like we're in school and they're the cool popular kids, but I'm just this underclass wallflower. Uh, but that's good. That's good. So, um, yeah, it's a great program, and and we should feel good about it. Uh, the next word in my talk is is but. And, but if that is not to say that we do not have significant financial challenges at this church. Um, during the consecration process, uh, we always, you know, we always talk about how our, our, our gifts are uh, really God's belongings and that we need to share blessings, that kind of stuff. But for me, I always like to know, well, well what, what's going on at the church and what are our needs? And so that's what I'm going to be talking about now. Um, uh, we have both challenges on an operating basis and a long-term, longer-term cap capital basis. Uh, this year, our operating deficit, so that's something we're going to need to close Uh this year. And then also we have a, uh, a big list of uh, capital items, which you can see up there. We've got, um, we got to get the ADA compliance. We got a leaking roof and um, we got, we're going to have to replace the furnace and some other things. Um, so going back to the, the cheers theme a little bit, uh, you may know that Shelly Long, who play, plays uh, Dan Chambers in the cheers series. She also starred in a movie with Tom Hanks. It was called the money pit. So that, that kind of applies here too a little bit. Um, so in closing, just let me say that th thank everybody for what you've done over the years. Um, but uh, please do what you can to help out with our, our operating deficit. And we're probably going to be talking to you over the next few years about these capital challenges. So thanks. Please stand as you are able. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.